morning, everyone. Uh, first half of the uh, video that I'm running is really similar to a previous presentation that I've done. Some of you may have already seen. The second half really is concentrating on the learnings had from that, and particularly the new developments, especially 3D visualization, data capture in real time. This presentation will be looking at how 12D is being used for spatial capture and providing 3D visualisation of underground services on three separate projects on the Gold Coast. We will first be looking at an earlier project where the newly constructed underground utilities were accurately surveyed prior to backfill, data post-processed and viewed in 3D visualisation. We will then be looking at the learnings made from that project and what new processes and developments have been put in place. In this aerial view, we are approaching the Gold Coast Highway. The section of road that we'll be looking at is just over one kilometre in length, starting from Broad Street and finishing at Robert Street, looking in a southerly direction. Overlaying a perspective view generated from 12D, this 3D visualisation allows us to see the underground structures through the design surface. The dark blue represent the as-constructed stormwater drainage, while the red represents as-constructed electrical conduits. We are now diving underneath the road surface to view the as-constructed utilities. The cyan colour on the left represents the water mains, while the brown colour in the distance represents sewer. Yellow represents street light electrical conduits, light footings and inspection boxes. And finally, magenta represents telecom conduits and inspection boxes. 3D visualisation lets us see a true representation of the size and shape of the constructed pipes, conduits, culverts, manhole structures, gully boxes, surface pits and so on. The vertical pipes shown on the water mains represent fire hydrants and valves. As you can clearly see, there are areas where a lot of services are very crowded into very confined spaces. This is why high accuracy for position and capturing actual shapes is so critical. To achieve high accuracy, it is necessary to capture every bend, change in grade and at as many regular intervals as possible, at least no greater than 5 metres apart. With modern surveying tools, it is very quick to capture a discrete point in the tracking mode, for example, it is literally as quick as placing the survey pole on the conduit, steadying the pole for verticality, and pressing measure and record. At each discrete point of capture, the positional accuracy is plus or minus 10 mil for horizontal and vertical direction at high confidence. For interpolated points, positional accuracy is plus or minus 50 mil in horizontal and vertical direction at high confidence. The captured data is geo-referenced for position and height. This allows for mapping to a geographic information system and allows for future location using global satellite navigation systems. In addition to spatial position, all relevant attribute data such as pipe diameter, culvert dimensions, type of material, obvert or invert position and so on is also captured. With this spatial and attribute information, it is a relatively simple process for 12D to create pipe and culvert strings. All processing and editing of the pipe strings is carried out in plan view and these can be viewed in 3D perspective in OpenGL view. The navigation tools within 12D such as drive through and orbit allows you to drive along, pan, orbit, zoom in and out and so on so that you can observe the structure from any position that you want. In this view you can see where two water mains have been connected to each other by a short looped section of pipe. This particular connection was put in place to boost the 150 mains from the 250 mains. I have been questioned many times as to why the need for such regular intervals when it is obvious that a section of pipe is in a straight line, or at least appears to be. Firstly, what appears to be straight by looking at it by eye does not always reflect reality. And secondly, and more importantly, it provides quality assurance recorded evidence that that is where the structure is built. Not all utilities are laid in open trenches. In this view, we can see a telecom conduit diving under a large constructed box culvert. This was in a low-lying area, which would mean trenching below sea level, 
so in this case the conduit was bored. Location for these types of construction was carried out by cable location methods. As these sections do not meet the same accuracy requirements by direct measurement, they are identified in a separate cable location model. In the distance you can see a large tree through the pavement surface. This tree represents a fig tree that was marked for protection. As we approach, you can see that the electrical and gas main conduits were bored under the tree. However, as the water main was constructed after these were put in, it was too risky to bore so close to the gas main, so they had to weave their way around all the tree roots. And as you can see from these images, it, this was a particularly difficult task. Unfortunately, after all this effort, it was later discovered after a storm that the tree had heart rot and had to be cut down. In this view of the intersection at Central Street, you can see why the installation of relocated and newly installed underground utilities is such a high cost and time component of major urban highway construction. With this amount of congestion, you can see what sort of problems this would cause if you never had an accurate record of their location and level of detail. Apart from a small section of a telecom line, what you see here is the relocated and new services only. I have not shown all of the existing utilities for several reasons. One, we do not have sufficient information to accurately plot everything that is there. And two, we do not know what has been removed or abandoned and left in the ground. Those yellow and green coloured conduits and boxes are the newly installed streetlight and traffic signalisation assets. You can also see the streetlight footing. One of the most significant learnings of this project was identifying the number of design conflicts and conflicts of newly constructed conduits with future structural designs. Here are examples of design conflicts with light mass footings with gully boxes. These are examples of newly laid telecom conduits conflicting with yet to be built light mass footings. And this one shows electrical conduits in conflict. These are only a sample of the number of conflicts that occurred on this project. They all led to construction delays and significant extra costs. Another identified problem was contractors with non-geometric design and not having accurate set out often led to wandering out of their allocated corridors. In this view, the, the electrical conduits were laid down first and they deviate towards the road quite a way outside their allocated space. This just makes life difficult for everyone else that follows on afterwards. You can see how all the other conduits have been squeezed and overlapping one another because they have run out of space. It causes a lot of delays to construction and often cause many of the conflicts with future design. One of the major learnings from this project was the importance of good communication. Due to the nature of this type of work, we only have a very small window of opportunity to capture data before it is backfilled. Communication is important at all levels, but especially at the coalface. Establishing contacts and developing a good working relationship with construction supervisors and construction personnel is a vital process. From these learnings, there have been two major developments in the way we manage and carry out underground utility construction and as constructed surveys. The most important first step is in the planning or development phase. The more effort that goes into planning, the fewer problems you will have down the track. It is in this phase that allowance should be made to include prescribed as constructed specifications that met the criteria I specified earlier in contract documents. In this diagram, the first data to be put into 3D visualisation is all of the known existing underground public utility plant. The next data set is the tin design surface created from the road design. Following that is all street lighting and traffic signalisation pole footings, associated pits and conduits. Next is all the drainage design, including pipes, manholes, gully boxes and so on. Any structural components that penetrate into the ground, such as retaining wall footings and large sign footings, are also included. Gold Coast Water are now providing geometrically designed water and sewer mains, and these are also included. Now that we have all of the geometric design and 3D visualisation, 
a visual inspection can quickly and easily identify any design conflicts. It is particularly important to carry this out early on before final construction drawings have been finalised and issued. In the construction phase, for the non-geometrical design, property boundaries are marked out for horizontal reference and cut fill depths are also marked out. Any geometric design is accurately set out for construction crews. As construction takes place, accurate as constructed survey is carried out prior to backfill. During road construction, as constructed survey captures all the drainage, streetlight and traffic signalisation footings, service pits and conduits. In the finalisation phase, all as constructed survey is archived. In this real example of stage 3 of the Gold Coast Highway, we are looking underneath the design surface at the intersection of Marine Parade and Brisbane Road. It is now populated with all known existing drainage, existing telecom conduits, all existing power pole footings, design street light footings, design mast arm and traffic signalisation footings, design street light electrical inspection boxes, design signalisation communication inspection boxes, design street light electrical conduits, design traffic signalisation communication conduits, design drainage, as constructed electrical conduits, as constructed telecom and a partly constructed water main at the top left of the screen. Although this work should be a designer's role, it is critical for the surveyor to be involved. It is the surveyor that is at the interface between design and construction and he or she needs to be satisfied that the information provided meets all their requirements long before construction takes place. A closer inspection of the same intersection, looking from above, you can see a clear conflict with the design mast arm footing and the design box culvert. In this view, there is a conflict with the proposed drainage and proposed street light and communication conduits. In this example, on another project at Olsen Ave, the design water main conflicts with the proposed box culvert and through the other two design stormwater pipes. Once this was identified, a new design was done with added enveloper going under the proposed box culvert. The next most significant development has been in capture and processing in real time. We have been working closely with 12D in developing a data pickup system that captures and processes data in real time. This data can then be viewed in 3D visualization showing pipe strings and extruded shapes. In this example we have an image of 12D pickup communicating with the Topcon total station on stage 3 construction of the Gold Coast Highway. The close-up image of the tough book in the top right corner is actual data capture of electrical conduits, coloured red. The other pipes and extrusions is design information. In this example of non-geometrical design for electrical conduits, coloured red, the surveyor was able to consistently track and advise the contractor if they were getting too close to the boundary, too far outside their corridor, getting too shallow to design surface, or conflicting with future design and this is all done in real time. As you can see the as constructed layout is much tighter than in the earlier project. In summary, 3D visualization is an excellent tool for design conflict identification at the planning phase. Real-time capture and processing identifies potential conflicts during construction this process provides an accurate quality assurance record of constructed utilities and structures. It is an excellent system to monitor the construction process to keep contractors within allocated corridors, thus preventing congestion and further delays during construction. And finally, using 12D field for set out, it enables accurate location for future works and planning.